Hello there Vishnu ECCs, this is Vishnu Jay, a proud fin trauma and I am here to introduce you to a friend of mine known as Audit and Assurance. So what exactly is the Audit and Assurance paper all about? What exactly will we learn from it and how is it different from all the other skill level papers? This is exactly what we will be discussing, okay folks. However, before we deep dive into it, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon so that you can get notified for more informative videos. Now, when we talk about the audit and assurance paper, there are two aspects that we will be discussing here. First of all, we'll be discussing about the syllabus where we will learn as to what exactly does it contain, what exactly is the syllabus all about. And secondly, we will also look at the exam structure as well. Okay, folks, so when it comes to the syllabus of audit and assurance, what exactly are the syllabus areas here? The overall audit and assurance syllabus is partitioned into six syllabus areas. Okay, folks, so what exactly are these? Let's take a look at it one by one, shall we? First of all, we have part A, that is audit framework and regulation. And when we talk about the auditing field, okay, folks, this is particularly a career option that is popular among a lot of ACCA students, okay, folks. And uh, be it choosing any profession, be it auditing, be it finance, the core and most important thing that you have to keep in mind is basically the basics in regard with regards to those particular profession, isn't it? Be it the finance profession, be it the audit profession, you will have to understand the basics of each and every one of these uh, professions that you are planning to enter into in the future. And that is exactly what we will cover in this particular syllabus area. Okay, folks, we will be looking at the basics of auditing first of all. Okay, folks, what exactly is audit? What exactly are various types of audit? What exactly is assurance engagement, etc.? All these things will be looked at in this particular syllabus area. And more and about that, as auditors, what they have to do is they will have to comply with a few laws and regulations. Okay, folks, so these regulations will also be covered within the syllabus area as well. Now, Moving on to the next syllabus area, that is part B, planning and risk assessment. Okay, so what exactly will we cover here? So folks, be it, uh, let's say that you're planning on doing an activity. Why exactly are you planning for it? For example, let's say that uh, you're planning to attempt uh, an ACC exam session. So what is the first thing that you should do here? You should plan to attempt that session, isn't it? So what is planning all about? Basically, it's deciding in advance what is to be done in the future, isn't it? So that's basically the idea here. Now, why exactly do we do that? Well, if you're planning to attempt a particular uh, exam session, you will have to uh, plan the date in which you will have to complete the syllabus and then practice questions and then attend past papers, attend mock exams, etc. Isn't it? So this is done so that you can efficiently and effectively prepare for your particular exam that you're attending, isn't it? So this is exactly what planning is all about. Okay, folks, when it comes to auditing, we will have to plan the audit process. Okay, folks, so this is exactly what you will be learning in this particular syllabus area. And the next aspect to it is risk assessment, which is basically things relating to the audit related risks. Okay, folks, so that's basically the idea here. There are a few risks within the financial statements or risks when you deal with a particular audit client, etc. So all these things will be understood from this particular syllabus area. Now, moving on to the next aspect that is internal controls. Okay, so what are internal controls? Internal controls can be said to be the immune system of a particular uh, organization. Why do I say that? Because what does the immune system do? It prevents diseases from occurring from the human body, isn't it? That's basically it. However, when it comes to organizations, we don't have any uh, biological aspects to learn here, but more and about that, when it comes to an organization, there is always a possibility that uh, fraudulent activities or errors can occur within the financial statement preparation process or, or any other systems within that organization, isn't it? So in order, to, uh, in order to take a precaution against these kinds of risks, the organization, what they do is they implement certain measures, okay, folks, and these control measures are known as internal control. That's basically the idea here. Okay, folks, that's just to give you a brief idea as to what internal controls are. And of course, we will be learning a lot more things in relation to internal controls within this particular syllabus area as well. Okay, folks, the auditors may review the internal controls, identify deficiencies, etc. So all these things with it will be learned within this particular syllabus area. Now, moving on to the next aspect, audit evidence. So folks, what you have to understand is that what exactly is auditing? Auditing is basically when an auditor provides an opinion on the financial statements of a particular organization. 
Okay, so what exactly does that mean? Well, we will learn that within syllabus area, syllabus area or syllabus part A itself. Okay, folks, however, what you have to understand is that whenever you're providing an opinion, you have to back that opinion with some facts, isn't it? So that is basically as to what the evidence are here. Okay, folks, we will learn a lot of interesting concepts such as uh, substantive procedures, analytical, analytical procedures, audit procedures, sufficient and appropriate evidences, etc. A lot of interesting concepts coming your way in part D, that is audit evidence, as simple as that. And of course, in part E, we have review and reporting, which is like the uh, one of the final stages in the audit process. Okay, folks, so that's basically the idea here. What we do is after conducting everything, or after conducting all the audit uh, related activities, we're gonna review it once more just to make sure that everything is okay or not. Okay, folks, that's basically a part of what we will be doing, doing uh, we, what we will be learning in part E, review and reporting as well. And of course, uh, reporting relates to uh, how the particular auditor provides an opinion. They provide their opinion in a written report. So how exactly is that report structured? or uh, how exactly will they report to various uh, stakeholders of the organization or the organization itself. All these things will be covered under this particular syllabus area. Now, so this is what the entire syllabus used to be. However, nowadays we have a new amendment or new syllabus area added to this particular uh, each and every subject within ACCA as well. Okay, folks, this is known as employability and technology skills. Okay, so what exactly is the idea here? This is not much theory, there is not much theory to it, okay folks, it's just a practical uh, skill that you need to have. So what exactly do I mean? Well, basically, these are just the uh, CBE related knowledge that you should have so that you can be prepared to attend the CBE exam. That's basically it, okay folks. Now, the good news is that we will be covering the entire syllabus content throughout our video lectures in Pintram. And of course, we will also be teaching you regarding the CBE related techniques and tricks within the uh, when we practice questions within the question marathon and throughout the sessions as well okay folks so that is basically as to what the entire audit and assurance syllabus is all about okay so now we have a brief idea as to what we're about to deal with isn't it now moving on to the exam structure as i stated earlier the audit and assurance exam is a bit different from all the other skill level papers such as performance management, financial management, or taxation, or even financial reporting as well. How exactly is it? Because if you look at all the other skill level exams, what exactly was the exam structure? We have three sections, section A, B, and C. And of course, we had 15 MCQs in section A, uh, three OTQs within section B, and a total of, I would say, two to three uh, case study questions within uh, the section C as well, isn't it? And of course, it was a three hour exam. Okay, folks, so that's basically the idea behind the other skill level papers. However, when it comes to audit and assurance, it's a bit different. How exactly is that? Because in audit and assurance, it's still a three hour exam, that's for sure. However, when it comes to the exam structure, we only have two sections, section A and section B. Okay, folks, and what exactly will be tested in each of these sections? Let's take a look at that, shall we? In section A, we have three OTQs or objective test questions. What are objective test questions? These are basically when you are provided with a scenario and five uh, MCQs in relation to it. Basically, the section B questions that you've attempted in all the other, uh, other skill level papers. Okay, folks, that's basically the idea behind OTQs. Okay, and we know that for one OTQ, we get a total of 10 marks, isn't it? And for three OTQs, we get a total of 30 marks, isn't it? So that's basically the idea here. Okay, folks. Now, uh, 30 marks in section A. What about in section B? When it comes to section B, we have three CRQs or constructive response questions. Okay. So when it comes to these three CRQs, or in other words, case study questions, to put it very simply, we have one case study questions worth 30 marks and two case studies worth 20 marks as well. And how much is that in total? That's a total of 70 marks, isn't it? In section B, you will get a total of 70 marks. Okay, folks, 70 in section B and 30 in section A. That gives us a total of 100, isn't it? So that's basically as to what the exam structure of audit and assurance is all about. So another question that you may have is as to whether this particular paper is a theory paper or does it involve any sort of calculations, isn't it? So let me tell you guys, 
It does have a few direct theory questions within section B especially. And of course, it also has a minor level of calculations when it comes to materiality calculations or when it comes to ratio calculations as well. However, majority of this particular paper will be testing you with practical scenarios. Okay, folks. So the examiner will provide you with a scenario where you will have to, let's say, identify audit related risks. And of course, uh, point out deficiencies in internal control systems to provide substantive procedures, audit procedures, etc. And you should tackle that particular scenario as an auditor. Okay, folks. So your answer should be specific to that scenario rather than stating the knowledge that you've learned from the syllabus itself, isn't it? So that is exactly the expectation that the examiner has from you. Okay, folks, you will have to deal with that particular practical scenario. Okay, folks, so I would say that rather than a theory paper, it's more like a practical paper, isn't it? It's a skill level paper, so it's definitely involves a practical uh, uh, skill that should be demonstrated within that particular paper. Okay, folks, so remember that. So that's basically as all about the audit and assurance paper. And of course, remember guys, we will of course be covering the entire syllabus throughout our video lectures. And of course, we will be practicing each and every questions of section A, OTQs, as well as section B case study questions, uh, the past paper questions, exam standard questions, and questions within the CBE environment within our question marathon as well. Okay, folks, so that you can learn all the exam techniques, exam tips and tricks to tackle the CBE exam in the most efficient and effective manner. So, that's all what I wanted to cover. If you have any questions, feel free to drop that down within the uh, comment section, okay, folks. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for more informative videos. This is Vishnu Vijay signing off.